Welcome to the Indoor Air Quality Lesson Series. This is Lesson 1A, Hazard versus Risk. It is the first of several short, typically less than 20-minute, lessons associated with my Indoor Air Quality course at Penn State. I hope you enjoy these lessons and learn some Indoor Air Quality Engineering. In this lesson, we'll list some acronyms. We'll discuss the differences between hazards and risks. Look at some tables related to mortality and we'll discuss LLE, loss of life expectancy. Here are some acronyms that we'll use throughout the course. Make sure you're familiar with these. I want to talk about the difference between hazard and risk. A hazard is the potential for producing an undesired result. For example, cancer or death. Risk may sound the same, but it's the probability of producing an undesired result. The main difference is that hazard is only qualitative while risk is quantitative. In other words, it has a number associated with it. Let's think about these statements below. Are they hazards or risks? These are related to smoking, and I got these from the CDC website. Overall mortality among both male and female smokers in the U.S. is about three times higher than that among similar people who never smoked. Well, here there is a number, but it doesn't really tell us any kind of probability, so I would call this one a hazard. You might say that it's a weak risk as well since there's a number. The major causes of excess mortality among smokers, and then it lists some diseases. There's nothing quantitative about that one, so it's a hazard. Smokeless tobacco is a known cause of cancer, and they talk about nicotine, etc. Again, there's no numbers, so that one would be a hazard. This statement tells us that tobacco use is the leading preventable cause of death, but again, it doesn't give us any numbers. What about this one? Cigarette smoking causes about one in every five deaths. You can calculate a probability from this statement if you knew how many total deaths there were. So I would call this statement a risk. These three give the number of deaths among all people, men and women, due to secondhand smoke. These are all risks. You can think about the other two on your own. Engineers deal with numbers, not just concepts. So we care about risk more than about hazard. Everything has a risk. You can die or get injured from falling in the shower, from driving to the store, or from getting cancer, for example. What we really care about, then, is relative risk. We put risks in perspective by comparing with other risks. For example, the CDC lists the top 10 causes of death in the USA, and these were downloaded in 2023, but they're always a couple years behind on their data. So these are for 2021, the most recent I could find at the time of this recording. I also compared a 2019 data because we didn't have COVID before 2019. The number one cause of death is heart disease, almost 700,000 people. And that number doesn't change too much from year to year. Cancer is a close second, around 600,000. COVID, of course, didn't exist in 2019. It started in 2020, and in 2021, 417,000 people died from COVID-19. Notice that COVID doesn't appear in 2019 data. Heart disease and cancer are number one and number two. Without COVID-19, accidents were number three in 2019. These don't always stay in the same order, but the top five are usually the same, except, of course, for this anomaly in 2020 to 2023. Some of these ones near the bottom of this top ten list switch places from year to year and may not even appear on the list. Speaking of COVID, we all remember the lockdowns that started in March 2020. COVID deaths have been cycling up and down, reaching a peak of about 25,000 per week in early 2021. At the time of this recording in June of 23, the pandemic is pretty much over. Let's do an example problem, how to calculate risk. We'll talk about COVID-19. Every person in the USA was potentially at risk. So let's calculate the risk in percent that a person in the USA died from COVID-19 in 2021. Well, first we need an equation for risk. Risk is the number of deaths divided by the number of people engaged or exposed to the activity. It's a probability of death due to the activity or the disease or whatever. First, I looked up the population of the USA in 2021. It was about 332 million. From the table I just showed you above, the number of COVID deaths was about 417,000. That comes from this table here in 2021. So we can use this formula to calculate the risk. I'll keep all these digits and round off at the end. We have the number of deaths divided by the total population. I get 0 
or multiplying by 100 and rounding off, my answer is 0.13% risk, a chance of 1.3 per thousand. Let's compare to smoking. From the table I showed you previously, we have 480,000 deaths divided by the population. No, that's not correct. Not everybody is engaged in this activity, namely smoking. Recall that risk is the number of deaths divided by the number of people engaged or exposed to the activity. I need another data point. I looked up the percent of people who smoke in the U.S. It's about 12.5%, or one out of every eight people. So the proper equation for risk would be our 480,000 divided by 0 0.125 times the population. That gives us 0 0.01156, or about a 1.2% risk. Compared to the risk of dying from COVID, this is a factor of about 10. You're about 10 times more likely to die from smoking than from COVID. Of course, that's if you smoke. So we see this factor of 10, even though the number of actual deaths is pretty close. Again, that's because of the number of people engaged in the activity. Now let's look at injuries or unintentional deaths. Again, these are 2021 data, the latest I could find in June of 2023. 225,000 roughly is for all accidental deaths. Notice that this number for 2021 is the same as this number for 2021 that I showed you in the previous table. So these data are consistent. Then this table breaks it down into different kinds of accidental deaths. This is the number of deaths from falls, about 45,000. Compared to motor vehicle traffic deaths, these are about the same. Compared to poisoning deaths, we see that this is more than twice as much as dying either from falls or from traffic accidents. I want to see if this number is correct according to our equation for risk. So how do we get this risk of 13.5 per 100,000 population? Well, let's use our equation, the number of deaths, 44686 in the numerator, and the total population in the denominator for 2021. Note that all people are exposed to the chance of a fall. So we put in the total population here. I get 0.0001346, or about 0.013%. To calculate the risk per 100,000 people, we take this number, the actual risk, times 100,000 people, and I get 13.5, which agrees with this number up here. So I'm happy about that. This equation that we used is how they generated this number. Let's compare the three numerical examples we've discussed. Death by falls is 0.013%. Death by COVID is 0.13%. And death by smoking is 1.2%. Each of these increases by approximately a factor of 10. There's an alternate way to report risk that you sometimes see in the literature. That is the reciprocal risk, where we take the actual risk number here for a fall, and the reciprocal risk is simply one over that number which is about 7430. So you might see someone write, you have a 1 in 7430 chance of dying from a fall. If you see a statement like this, take the reciprocal to get the actual risk. And then we typically report it as a percent. So you then multiply by 100. This is how we typically report risk. But this is an alternate way. There's another alternative way of expressing risk, and that is LLE, the loss of life expectancy. It's defined as the average time, typically in days or years, of life lost by engaging in an activity. Here's a table I found from the University of Pittsburgh. It lists these various activities and how many days of life that you lose on average by engaging in these activities. Some of these are rather interesting. Just being a male rather than a female means that you lose about 2,800 days. I'll convert that to years. 2,800 days times a unity conversion factor of one year. I always use 365.25 days in a year to account for leap years, which is about 7.7 .7 years. Bummer for us dudes, man. Yeah, that's a bummer being a man. A male smoking reduces his life expectancy by about 6.3 years. What about cancer? It's much smaller, only 980 days, or about 2.5 years of loss of life. This is true even though cancer is number two in the top 10 list of causes of death. How can this be? Well, the key lies with this asterisk, and I'll scroll to the bottom of the table to see what that asterisk means. 
it says the asterisk indicates averages over a total U.S. population. If it doesn't have an asterisk, it means only those exposed. So comparing cigarettes to cancer, this number includes only the ones that smoke and only males, whereas cancer includes everybody in the country. This would be a much larger number if we included only those people that actually get cancer. Another one of interest to our course is air pollution. We lose on average only about 80 days, which is less than three months of life due to air pollution. These become negligible. As you can see, they're ranked from highest to lowest. Here's the bottom of the table, where again, these numbers are days of loss of life expectancy. Let's look at coffee. Drinking two cups of coffee per day leads to a loss of life expectancy of 26 days. I like my coffee and I'm not going to worry about losing a month of my life by drinking coffee. I don't drink coffee. It makes me nervous. Well, Ned, you'll probably live about a month longer than average. A final example I'll use is airline crashes. The average loss of life expectancy is only one day. That's totally negligible. So the risk of flying in a commercial airplane is negligibly small. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.